Good morning, folks. We'll start with the first June Great Lakes ice coverage in over a decade. Back in 2003, we saw ice remain until late May, but we took another step this year. To count as having ice for this record, the lake, Lake Superior in this case, needs to have at least 1% ice coverage. Should be gone soon. Now I'd like to share a thrashing of the IPCC from some often biased sources. The House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. It's not that this document's full of lies, and it's not that the IPCC has been anything but wrong for more than two decades, but this group has childish, angry debates among them over things like evolution, and both sides tend to advocate along party lines. The document itself is actually full of correct information, but if I can repeat something I said about entering this climate arena in Agenda 21 Counter-Strike, I think it can help explain the issue. On the left, I see those who share my love of the planet and who have benign goals for fixing some bad stuff about humanity, but they're using lies to do it, and in taking control of the issue have been as corrupt as the group sitting to my right, who appears to have the correct data on the climate but who are almost entirely bought by the other side, advocating deregulation and similar things for the richest people on earth. Anyone want to sit right down in the middle aisle with me? Anyway. We're on to an advanced update to the Solar series. We'll put a link to that series for you below. This updates episode two, Layers of the Sun, as we saw ionized lines of iron, helium, and carbon that help us get the SDO images. Well, this paper is just the latest in a flood of studies by a few groups who are characterizing and quantifying the elemental spectrum of our star. This one focuses on the iron elements, but they cite the past work that quantifies the other non-hydrogen atoms up there. Very good, but very difficult read. EPA, no surprise here, we all knew this was coming. A tiny slice of the IPCC's failure is genuinely not their fault. One hopes the fraudulent ongoings at one regulatory agency in one nation can't sway an entire report, and that we aren't missing other real environmental dangers somewhere else, fingers crossed. It was bad enough when the stories of fraud came out, but since then, We've had complete inaction in a pseudo-middle finger to the American taxpayers. <clears throat> this point, I bet you're sick of looking at white papers, okay? We never like seeing activity at these buoys as the area gets unstable pretty quickly. Going around the world with a precipitable water overlay shows our two convergences affecting South America. The low that could have drawn a convergence up over South Africa either did it quickly while I slept or it faded away. There will be rain across a number of areas here today, but the top concern is this low and northern convergence in eastern Australia. Europe again will see Mediterranean storms, but the top threat is in the east on that same darn line that has remained for days. Local flash flooding is almost guaranteed. A low in the North Pacific is drawing a convergence straight south at Hawaii. Not sure if the storm clouds are developing that far south, but should be pretty windy. Same story as yesterday in the U.S., when map shows powerful flows coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, and the east is under a widespread rain and thunderstorm watch tonight. No persistent contrail excuses in the southwest today. Top weather watch remains south of Mexico. The sun went silent and the development stopped in its tracks. Make no mistake though, this thing is forming with or without solar activity and has already been tied to at least one Uyen tremor as that six that hit Mexico. Speaking of a silent star, so much for that uptick as the sunspots turned in. This is more like what we saw two years ago. Sunspots get shy with Earth in their periphery. I'm having some fun wordplay here because there's not much else to say. Perhaps we'll see development as they turn in, but as of now, all is calm. That is true for the solar wind as well, but in a kind of wrong way. Folks, this is far too low for solar wind speed, and that was before it got laid out like a loudmouth. That's the weaker heliospheric pressure, the weaker outward force, and yes, a sign of what Lockheed Martin agreed was the diminishing magnetic field strength of our star. So, we were eyeing these coronal holes for a ramp in the earthquake index. We ramped the index, but the leading northern extension lost all power and disappeared from the power charts in a matter of hours. The geoeffective forces were well muted and the only rumble I'll mention today was way up at the North Pole. If you were watching closely, you saw that the backside northern extension gained a good bit of force, still a day or two away from visibility turning in from the left side. Gong reveals how far north that extension might actually go. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone. <laughs>